This is a video on how to do a four-wheel alignment on a C6 Corvette using CSM hub stands. Uh, same would apply to a C7. Don't know about the C8 yet. Haven't had a chance to work on one. The first thing you need is you need some way to lock the steering wheel in place straight ahead. Um, this is a device that I use. You can buy these on Amazon or other places. It basically locks the steering wheel so it doesn't move, and that's very important. Uh, these are hub stands. Uh, they're very well made. Uh, they bolt up to the uh, hubs. If you have uh, ceramic brakes, you need a 15 millimeter spacer. The reason is you have to clear these bolts. These bolts actually stick out past the face. So a 15 millimeter spacer, so these can bolt up, is what you need to clear the uh, bolts on there. Uh, you could do this on a floor. Uh, for camber, you need to make sure the floor is level, uh, probably level within a sixteenth of an inch. If not, we use these uh, stands that are designed for doing alignment. Makes it easier to get up underneath the car to adjust things, and uh, you can actually use uh, tiles underneath these stainless steel plates to level these if your floor is not level. This floor is level within a sixteenth of an inch, so we don't need to do that. Uh, camber is set on this car using uh, offsets on the lower control arms both front and rear and then in the front to fine tune it for both caster which is hard to see we use shims so the the shims are in there but it's difficult to see them under this light uh, for tow there's a bar and you have two tape measures. These are graduated in sixteenth of an inch. And then you have a laser that actually shoots back to a target. And that's for your thrust angle. So you'll be sure to get everything straight. Uh, the lasers are, are a nice option. Uh, they have lithium ion batteries. They're rechargeable. Uh, we've already done the front. We run about three degrees negative camera in the front and about a sixteenth toe out. Uh, we run about 1.8 degrees negative in the rear and we're going to run about 2 sixteenths toe in on these cars to make them uh, steer better. Um, caster on this car, and I'll check it here shortly with a uh, rotating turntable. Caster on this car is somewhere between 6 and 7 degrees. Um, that's where we leave it. It's got power steering. Uh, you shim the uppers to uh, tilt the thing back if you have a caster change. Uh, it's a very nice setup. We then change the lasers from front to rear. The targets go to the front. Tape measures go there. And uh, basically, it's, a, it's an extremely nice setup. For measuring camber, I use an AccuLevel gauge. And basically, you put it on there, and you take a reading. And of course, if it reads 87 degrees, that means you've got 3 degrees negative camber. There's also an AccuLevel bracket that you could mount it here and get your readings there. I much prefer because these hub plates are precision machined, which makes it very easy to get a reading on there. Uh, you could also use one of these inexpensive gauges. Uh, these are about 30 or 40 dollars. Same thing. This plate's aluminum, so it won't stick to it, but you would basically take it and uh, do the same type of reading on there uh, to get camber on both sides. Uh, very nice setup, very well made. Uh, this one's for a five bolt hub. And the way it's made on these slots, it'll fit most any five bolt pattern. They also make a four bolt pattern for smaller cars. Um, I've used it on a McLaren and I've used it on a ZL1 1LE Camaro. So. Uh, very nice setup. Uh, we used strings before, and it was interesting the difference. On this setup with the lasers, our toe was off about two sixteenths of an inch. It's much harder to get everything just right on strings. With this laser and the targets, um, everything's within a sixteenth, probably within a thirty second. So again, uh, very nice hub stands. If you have regular brakes, non-ceramic brakes, non-two-piece rotors. The hub stands bolt right up. Uh, if not, you need some 15 millimeter spacers, which are available everywhere on Amazon. And uh, again, 
that's basically it for either a C6 or C7 Corvette. If you're not using fixed plates on your lower control arm from several sources uh, and you have adjustable camber bolts on the bottom, it's the same thing. And one of the reasons I use the stands makes it much easier to get underneath the car if you need to do any adjustments underneath. On the ground, even on the hub stands, it's difficult to get to your lower control arms and your uh, tie rods. Sitting up on the uh, stands makes it a lot easier. So, again, nice product. Uh, I'll also post a link to his website. Uh, you can go look at his stands. Uh, that'll do it for now. Bye. So here's the rear alignment, same setup. Uh, you move the lasers to the rear. You move the targets back to the front. Move the tapes back here. And I'm using uh, about 2 16th toe in on the back, a 16th toe out on the front. Uh, this particular car is going to be running Michelin slicks. It actually handles better with a little more toe in uh, based on the fact that only the front control arm is adjustable as far as the uh, shims. The rear is fixed, so you're basically setting the camber with the front and then you set the toe. Uh, the C7s have uh, both on the rear, both lower control arms actually have the ability to shim them or have eccentric adjustments. So this particular car I put uh, bare tie rod ends and these are uh, so you can do bump steer on them. They're the same front and rear. Uh, this car has Penske adjustable shocks. Uh, it also has uh, LG drop spindles to lower the car an inch. Uh, uh, some other things, it has a, a ZR1 RPM transmission diff, uh, ZR1 axle, ZR1 torque tube uh, out of a ZR1. So even though it's a 07 Z06, it's new, a lot have been upgraded. It also has a uh, KTEC LS7 motor. Uh, this particular car has a ARE th uh, three-stage dry sump, uh, 12 and a half to one compression, KTEC oil pump. Uh, still using the titanium rods, but uh, Molly pistons, uh, five thousandths over. Uh, when I rebuilt the motor about 1,500 miles ago. So uh, it's a very nice track car. Uh, runs good. Run uh, 100 octane on the track. And uh, for the street, to run 93 octane, I have a water methanol injection system. So uh, you don't spend that much time at full throttle on the street. So you can run 93, and uh, there's actually a device there to set the uh, injection based on airflow. And I use the uh, windshield washer tank over on the side as the container. It holds about a gallon and a half. So worked out nice. Uh, very nice car. Like I said, we're setting it up for Michelin slicks now. We were running Hoosiers before. Uh, we're going to Michelin's. Uh, I got these from uh, GT Tires. These are uh, one heat cycle takeoffs from the 24 Hours of Daytona this year. So. Uh, we're going to go to Michelin Slicks and uh, see what our... The other tire I like, if you haven't run them, is the Goodyear Eagle F1 Supercar 3Rs. Uh, they come in both 18s and 19s. These happen to be 19s for a Camaro Z01 1LE. Uh, I also run them on a McLaren. And uh, eventually, uh, we might try a set of 19-inch on the Corvette uh, with a set of 19-inch wheels. So... Uh, basically, that's it for alignment. A uh, lot better than strings. Uh, the hub stands make it really nice uh, to be able to get your car set up. And uh, the thrust alignment's probably more accurate than even some of the commercial uh, alignment racks, which we've checked a few of them, and there's a lot of them I've seen that are uh, two or three degrees off uh, from level. And so when you're doing camber, camber's all based on gravity. Uh, if your floor is not level or your platform is not level, then your, your camber readings are off. I guess for a street car, it doesn't make any difference. But when you're trying to get to a tenth of a degree setting up a car, the, uh, the base is what matters. So anyway, uh, I'll post this on YouTube. Anybody has any questions, they can email me.